And fans on my right fighting out of the black corner wearing red velvet trunks from San Pedro, California at an even 126 pounds. A fine boxing career, 35 wins in 38 starts. The undisputed featherweight boxing champion of the world, Raul Rojas. I was born in East L.A., but I was raised in the South Side. Uh, Watts used to be my neighborhood, you know, quarter gang. And, uh, and that's where I started off. And uh, finally, when I finally went to prison at 2019. And uh, so I went to Tracy. I started boxing down there. And then that's what they told me I, I should go pro, you know. And uh, so I did. And I got out when I was 21. Oh, okay. When I got out, I went to the Jake Chagruz gym on 78th and Hoover. That's where I started my career at. Yeah. That's the only gym around, uh, close to, my, to where I lived, you know. I lived around 116 in San Pedro. So I take the, the, the streetcar, the bus, to the gym on 78th and Hoover. Get off and walk over to the gym, you know. And then uh, I did that until I, I finally, my manager got me to move to Pedro. They got me a job on the docks and everything, yeah. And uh, then I started to turn pro when I went professional. And I went, then did good. I went pro, no matter what was your fight. I was undefeated until I fought for the championship, yeah. From San Pedro, California, playing in at 125 and a half pounds, wearing bright red velvet trunks, the undefeated Raul. El invicto Raúl Rojas, de 56 kilos, 900 gramos. kilos y medio. Time 1965. That was my first loss to Vicente Saldivar from Mexico City. Ahí mañosamente se pescó de la pierna derecha de Saldivar Raúl Rojas como tratando de derribarlo. Pero él fue a caer sentado ahí en una cuerda, no hubo cuenta y se reanuda la acción. Es el décimo, quinto y último round de la pelea. no tenía caso que siguiera esta golpista. El final del pleito estaba próximo y cuando faltaban 10 segundos para que terminaran el round y la pelea, el referee Tommy Hart ha cortado por Lozano y levantando el brazo de Vicente Saldívar lo ha declarado vencedor por nocaut. En California no hay nocaut técnico. I just, nocaut. I started partying, Aquí, you know, para nosotros for partying, me up. Well, you're partying before fights and you think you're going to be in shape. You know, it, it goes. He left it off with the women who ran around the streets, you know. And so I, I loved my title of first defense. Raul Rojas was a champion of the world. And when Raul Rojas lost his title, he lost his title, according to Jackie McCoy, because he wasn't taking care of himself. Here's a guy leaving training camp, in the middle of training camp, to go out and have a drink. He wasn't determined. He wasn't, he, he didn't have that that dedication that he had at one time. Jack McCoy told him, you don't have it, Raul. Not that you don't have the ability, he doesn't have the ambition anymore. Jack McCoy told him to retire. Can you imagine how many people would, 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 have, would have loved to have been part of this, have, have a little piece of that? But not Jack McCoy, he told him, you know what? You don't, you, 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 you don't have the dedication that you had before. This is not for you now. Cut it loose. Raul didn't didn't um, want to. So Jackie McCoy says, "Well, you have to go somewhere else. I don't want to manage you." And uh, I thought I could handle, it, you know. But nope, I don't want to look. I was like any other fighter. To do that, you lose your speed, your stamina, you know. You punch the fire. Did your managers get on your case about it? 
Yeah, we're taking McCoy to get on my knees, but, but uh, it can't stop me. You know, you do your own thing, I do my thing. So I love my zip, my zip, my zip, my fans and my sharpness. And I also love my defense, my entire defense. They lost about four fights after that. But they're all top notch contenders that I fought. After he lost his job on the waterfront, uh, he was just like a bum on the street, you know. And I used to run into him, and every time I saw him, I um, I went and bought him something to eat. I would buy clothes for him. There was a, there's a shoe store in San Pedro where where, where uh, they knew Raw, and uh, they would give me uh, extra shoes from the from their their shoe store. Sometimes I brought him home to my house and feed him and uh, give him a bath. I give him money, he forgets, he loses it. Give him clothes, he forgets it. Or people rip him off. I bought, I bought him jackets when it was cold. And uh, the next time I see him, he don't have it. He don't know what happened to it. And I found out he was in the hospital. And then he got real sick. I don't know what was wrong with him. Uh, but he, he went like, you know, he didn't weigh, never weigh too much. He weighed, like, say if he weighed 120 pounds, but he went down to like 80 pounds. He looked like he was almost dead. And that's when I, you know, I was really concerned and, uh, and, and, and didn't know how to get a hold of his daughters, didn't know how to get a hold of his ex-wife. And Raul was left out in the street again with no place to go. And they took him into some care home, unlicensed care home, and they had no, um, they weren't, they weren't up to par with their facility they had there, and, and Raw was able to walk away, which put him back out on the street drinking again. And Raw being a diabetic and drinking and not having his insulin that he's supposed to have every day, put him his life in danger. I notified the police department of Rawl and its condition. They had these other officers patrolling, going through the alleys. They were even looking in trash bins, behind trash bins, behind businesses. They had helicopters out there. Uh, the, the effort they made to locate Rawl, it, it was just, so unbelievable. He ended up getting from that um, place back to Wilmington, which is over 100 miles. I don't know how he got here, but he got here. He got back to Wilmington. Uh, hitchhike or what, or what, but he made it back. You know, just a matter of a, another drink, or another day without there in the, hot, in the hot sun or not eating. Uh, could have, could have took his life. Then they got him into this convalescent home where he's gained considerably uh, a lot of weight. He's gained, his, gained some weight back and uh, he's still not up to par, but he's a lot better, a lot much better than what he was. He's doing okay now. He's uh, you know, asking him to fight. Said, yeah, I've been training uh, Tracy, you know, and I, I did all the training over here, you know, since I was in shape, you know. So it's okay, he's on the box, and I work out with pros. So he said, you know, he said, maybe we could have my first pro fight in January, about 63. And uh, I went undefeated. <laughs>